Hello, this is John N5ID. I wanted to go over some of the features of my LDG AT1000 Pro tuner. I really like this tuner. I don't have any cables hooked up between the tuner and the radio. I, I just use it manually uh, tuning by sending a carrier from the radio and I'll explain more of that as we go. Once you tune up on a frequency, the LDG automatically remembers in memory the settings for that frequency and the next time you go there, it tunes it uh, in memory mode and it's very, very quick. I, again, I'm very impressed with the tuner. The only thing I don't like is the SWR bar graph. Sometimes it doesn't agree with the Daiwa CN901 or the SWR meter on my Yaesu FT710. Other than that, it works really, really well. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to begin by doing a full tune, and I'm on 3525. And in the manual, it says tuning, uh, to get the best tuning out of this tuner, to tune it with between 10 and 20 watts, so I simply set my radio on 15 watts. Now I'm going to hold the tune button down until those two lights come completely together, and that means I told it to do a full tune. And you can see it was kind of loud, kind of bothersome as far as the noise goes. But one of the great things after you tune up on a frequency, it remembers it and it's very quick and I'll show you that in just a moment. But before I show you that, I want to show you something else. Notice I've got just a tad bit of SWR, not much, just a tad bit. Well, I can use the C up and down buttons to change the capacitance and the L up and down buttons to change the inductance. And normally what I do is I'll hit the C up. You can see we just about, there we go, we got rid of, we got rid of all the SWR. Now, since I made those manual changes with the tuner, the tuner doesn't automatically remember those manual changes, but I can tell the tuner to remember them, and it's very simple. You hit the function button and the tune button, and it will remember the changes that I just made on 3525. Now what I want to do is go up the band to 3855 and I just go into ready mode to tune and this time I'm going to tell it to do a memory tune instead of a full tune. You notice I won't hold the tune button down long enough for the LED lights to come completely together. And see how quick that was? That's pretty amazing. And I find most of the time it tunes my 80 meter loop on 80 through 10 meters pretty much down to a one to one. Sometimes it'll be 1.3 to one and that's when I'll use the C up and down, change the capacitance or L up and down and change the inductance to get it down to a one to one match. And when I do that, I simply hit the function and tune buttons to tell it to remember those settings. And from now on, it remembers the settings. I'm really impressed with it. It works very, very well. A couple of things I'll show you. If you want to change the power meter from peak reading to average reading, it's very simple. You hit function and then you hit C up and you hit function and C up to change it again. And the way that you know it's in peak or average mode, you hit function, C up. Notice how it went down very quickly. We're in average mode there. Notice how it goes down slow. We're in peak mode there. To change the tuner to automatic tuning where the tuner will automatically tune when you hit it with a carrier, uh, if the SWR is above 
your preset threshold, you hit the function button and the C down button. And notice the two lights together, that means it's in automatic mode. I'm gonna hit function and C down again. And when the two lights are on the extreme left and right, you know that it's in manual mode. To change your power scale, you hit function and L up, that's 100 watts. Function and L up, that's 1,000 watts. To change your SWR threshold, you hit function and L down. That was 2 to 1, 2.5 to 1, 3 to 1, and I'm going to go back to 1.7 to 1. Uh, to put the tuner in bypass, it's very simple. You quickly push the tune button. Notice it went into bypass mode. To take it out of bypass mode, quickly push the tune button and it's out of bypass mode. And to change antennas, it has two antenna ports on it. You simply hit the antenna button to go back and forth. Now there is no antenna one light. So when you hit the antenna button and the antenna two light is out, you know you're on antenna one. Again, I really like the tuner. I haven't found any faults with it other than sometimes the SWR bar graph does not read properly. Uh, other than that, a great tuner. No, it's not a Palstar HF auto tuner, but it also doesn't cost $1,800, and it meets my needs. Uh, my amplifiers will do between four and 600 watts, I have a little solid state amp. It'll do about 450 max, and then my AL811 will do about 600 watts, and it handles the power on those amplifiers fine. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. You can make comments. Sometimes I don't read a lot of the comments. I've been going through cancer treatment and haven't had a lot of times to work with the videos. Uh, but you can also email me on my QRZ email address. If you enjoyed the video, I invite you to subscribe. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you and God bless.